Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see what are the different mixture requirements and their needs for an IC engine of spark emission type. Okay, mixture. First of all, let us see and understand what does this word mean. In mixture, it means the combination of air and fuel in a definite proportion meant for combustion in a SI engine okay so since we are considering SI engine this mixture of air and fuel in a definite proportion is formed outside the combustion chamber and this might be by the means of a carburetor or this might be by the means of a fuel injector which is attached in the inlet manifold which is nothing but a passage meant to direct the flow of air towards the combustion chamber it is very very important that this mixture of air and fuel in this the fuel should be in the form of a mist or a spray or it should be atomized the reason behind this is when the fuel is atomized when it is in the form of a spray it will mix throughout the quantity of air that it is supplied with so this will create a homogeneous mixture with a uniform concentration throughout this homogeneous mixture is very 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 important to achieve complete combustion and to reduce harmful gases emission in during the combustion in a SI engine now how this mixture is formed this mixture is formed due to a pressure difference between the passage of air and the path of fuel because of this when there is sudden expansion the fuel atomizes and converts into, into the form of spray okay now this mixture okay this mixture of air and fuel it needs to be in definite proportion what does this mean you simply cannot mix any amount of fuel in any amount of air there needs to be a limit any amount of fuel in any amount of air will not be combustible there are limits as to how much amount of fuel should be added in maximum limit and as well as in minimum limit if it goes beyond these two extremities then that mixture will be deemed to be non combustible then the mixture will not necessarily always be of the same type why is this this is because the engine will never run in a similar condition throughout the condition pertains to the load on the engine and the driving conditions as well for example you will never have a uniform stretch of a road without any curves and bends and turns and inclines and declines and without any speed breakers and potholes and other obstacles when these things are present you need to change the speed of the engine accordingly if there is a long stretch of road without any obstacle you can drive the engine at a higher speed maintaining it at a constant level but if there are turns if there are speed breakers you'll have to go on successively changing the speed of the engine which you will be very well aware if you are driving in urban localities you constantly need to keep on changing the gears engage and disengage the clutch increase and decrease the speed of the vehicle as you come across signals obstacles speed speed breakers pedestrians animals curves and bends and turns and etc so when the speed of the engine or when the requirement from the engine it goes on changing so does the requirement of the mixture just for the sake of an example if you want to do a large amount of work you will need to consume a large amount of food which is having a large amount of energy concentration if you do the vice versa if you do the contrary like you are working very very hard but you are not consuming enough food then it will be harmful for your body you will be severely dehydrated and you will suffer from weakness and you won't be able to give out the required output for completing that hard work Similarly, if you are consuming a larger amount of food with higher energy concentration and you are not converting into it 
it into work then you very well know that you will suffer you will start suffering from multiple health issues the main among them and the primary being obesity okay so similarly if the engine needs to perform a large amount of work that is it has to handle a large amount of load it needs to have large energy input and this energy in the engine it comes in the form of fuel so you need to supply large amount of fuel okay similarly if the engine it needs does not need to perform a large amount of work or it has a limited load then even small quantities of fuel will be sufficient for it to work hence mixture requirement it goes on changing then again coming back to the limits under which the mixture is combustible it is simply called as the combustible limits you need to mix fuel in air you cannot mix air in fuel you need to supply air and you need to mix fuel in it now why do you need air obviously the very basic answer is fuel air is required to burn the fuel but more specific answer will be oxygen in the air is required to burn the fuel okay now you cannot attach just imagine you are attaching a separate oxygen cylinder to your engine why because oxygen is required to burn the fuel hence i am attaching an oxygen cylinder that won't do okay you need to bear the expense of oxygen you need to bear the load of oxygen cylinder it will be very inconvenient to carry it along with the engine and the engine will need to do additional amount of work in carrying the load of that oxygen cylinder so instead of that we have air which is freely available by the grace of god so we are going to use that air itself which naturally contains oxygen in it now we very well know that air is not made up of completely only oxygen it has got other elements the major element that is present in the air is nitrogen then you have oxygen okay so if you supply air you need to supply in a larger quantity because larger amount of air will have large amount of oxygen which will ensure the burning of fuel but if you supply excessive amount of air that air will proportionately reduce the quantity of fuel and whatever fuel burns the excessive air will provide cooling will result in the cooling of the to of the heat which is generated by the combustion of the fuel and hence combustion won't be able to sustain itself okay so excessive amount of air is not at all feasible because it will lead to the quenching of the combustion and the combustion will not be able to sustain on it itself on the other hand if you supply extra amount of fuel let us say there are five molecules of air but you are supplying 10 molecules of fuel we consider over here that one molecule of air is sufficient for one molecule of fuel so what you have done you have supplied additional five molecules of fuel so those five molecules of fuel will remain unburned after combustion why because for five molecules of air you had supplied five molecules 10 molecules of fuel so five molecules will balance out five molecules of air and fuel what remains is five molecule of fuel so they will remain unburned so you cannot supply excessive amount of air and you also cannot supply excessive amount of fuel then the question arises then what can you supply how can you supply this is the mixture this is called as the limits under which you can mix fuel in air so let us see in this diagram you can see that there are certain numbers written 0 7 9 14.5 21 okay between 0 and 7 there is a region marked by hatched lines which indicates too rich after 30 again the region is marked with hatched lines and this time it says too lean so this is the in, and between 7 and 30 or more specifically between 9 and 21 you find that ignition limits for hydrocarbons and between 9 and 21 you find practical limit for a carbureted engine so between 7 and 30 a hydrocarbon will be able to burn but if you are supplying that hydrocarbon fuel through a carburetor and mixing it with air then between 9 and 21 that fuel will burn okay these numbers are all fine 9 21 7 21 and so on and so forth but what does these number numbers mean 
let us see 7 means fuel air fuel ratio 7 parts of air 1 part of fuel 9 means 9 parts of air 1 part of fuel that is 9 is to 1 14.5 means 14.5 parts of air 1 part of fuel then you have 21 parts of air 1 part of fuel so it is 7 is to 1 9 is to 1 14.5 is to 1 21 is to 1 and 30 is to 1 why this part of fuel is only always one why are we going on changing the part of air and not changing the part of fuel this is because air contains oxygen in a limited amount so for burning a given part of fuel you will need to correspondingly supply more parts of air to ensure complete combustion okay now types of mixture too rich and too lean if you see the parts of air it they go on changing like let us start from 14.5 if you go to 9 it will be 9 parts of air and 1 part of fuel if you go to 7 it will be 7 parts of air and 1 part of fuel so the part of fuel is remaining same but the parts of air they are reducing which indicates that concentration of the fuel is increasing so when the concentration of fuel it increases parts of air decrease proportionately and the concentration of fuel it increases then the mixture is going to be called as a rich mixture on the other hand if you go from 14.5 up to 21 is to 1 you find that parts of air is in, are increasing whereas the part of fuel is remaining constant at 1 so it indicates that concentration of the fuel is going on reducing when the concentration of fuel it goes on reducing it is called as a lean mixture and when the concentration it increases it is called as rich mixture between these two there is one ratio which is called as chemically correct or stoichiometrically correct mixture which is the mixture of air and fuel in which total quantity of air will be utilized completely burn the part of fuel which has been supplied so it will be not rich it will be not lean it will be a chemically correct mixture so these are air and fuel mixture now we have already stated that mixture requirements they go on changing okay so what are the conditions let us see when the vehicle is stationary when the engine is shut down let us say when the atmospheric conditions are of that of a cold weather you crank up your engine you try to start it okay what happens it does not start easily what do you do you pull the choke cable what does the choke cable do it does exactly what its name is meant to do that is choking choke it means to restrict the supply of air as the supply of air is restricted automatically proportion of fuel it increases and chances of combustion will increase now what happens before pulling the choke cable whatever fuel has been vaporized it comes in contact with the cold combustion chamber walls and it recondenses as soon as the fuel recondense the chances of its combustion they go down dramatically so it will not burn hence the vehicle will not start but as you increase the supply of fuel or you reduce the supply of air rather the chances of the fuel being burned will increase as the proportion of fuel has increased so as this happens the fuel will keep on burning and beat in incomplete fashion but nevertheless it will sustain the combustion which will increase the temperature of the combustion chamber walls and subsequently when the vapor of fuel or the spray of fuel or the mist of fuel when it comes in contact with this it will not recondense and now you can decompress the choke cable and resume the normal supply of the mixture and the combustion will sustain now so in this case when you restrict the supply of air the mixture will become rich okay similarly when the vehicle is stationary that and the engine is running that condition is called as what it is called as idling okay this idling it means the engine is running at a constant rpm you can see it on the consoles of your bikes engine rpm 1100 to 1200 rpm not more and definitely not less the combustion will not sustain if it is less than this in this case the load on the engine is negligible because the vehicle is not moving so a general concept which goes around is when the load on the engine is negligible the mixture requirement will be lean even if you supply a lesser amount of fuel proportionately it will satiate the requirement of the engine 
but this is not the case when the engine is idling the rpm of the crankshaft is low when the rpm of the crankshaft is low the speed of reciprocation of the piston is also low when the speed of reciprocation of the piston is low it will exert a lower amount of pressure during the exhaust stroke while moving from bdc towards tdc on the exhaust gases as a result when the piston moves up from bdc towards tdc during exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve is open less amount of pressure is developed and total amount of exhaust gases are not able to come out of the combustion chamber which results in some gases being left over in the combustion chamber even after the exhaust stroke is completed these are called as residual exhaust gases what happens after one cycle's exhaust stroke is completed the next cycle will commence and suction will start now when suction takes place inlet valve will open charge will start to come in but already in the combustion chamber exhaust gases are present so when this charge comes in it does not find the complete space to come in because it has been occupied by the exhaust gases so less amount of charge will come in when the less amount of charge will come in the chances for it to burn are going to be lesser so what happens you need to supply a mixture which is having a more amount of fuel why because as the amount of fuel in the mixture will increase its density is going to increase when the density of the charge increases it will be able to force its way into the combustion chamber despite the presence of exhaust gases when the charge comes in with more amount of fuel in the combustion chamber the chances of it burning and sustaining the combustion will go on increasing hence we can we say that in idling condition less uh, sorry rich amount of a rich type of a mixture is required okay then the next case is cruising cruising it simply means imagine a straight road of 15 to 20 kilometer stretch you are driving your vehicle at a leisurely speed of 50 to 60 kilometers or 70 kilometers per hour without the need of changing time and again the speed of the engine applying the brake engaging and disengaging the clutch this is called as cruising in this condition a lean mixture will also satiate the requirement of the engine because the load on the engine is constant and it has gained a certain momentum. Hence, during cruising mode, the mixture requirement will be leaner. Now, if you are carrying a 10 kg bag of rice, okay, you will be moving at a certain speed and you will require a certain amount of energy most of you might be able to do it very very easily now instead of 10 kg bag of rice if you are given a 100 kg sack of rice and you are required to move at the same speed will the same amount of energy be required by your body not at all you will require a larger amount of energy to pull that extra amount of load same is the case with the ic engine if you need to increase the load which is carried by the engine you need to supply it with more energy and the energy for the engine comes in the form of fuel and the fuel is present in air fuel mixture so you will need to increase the proportion of the fuel and need to make the mixture rich this mode of engine operation is called as the power mode wherein it will have to carry or pull a larger amount of load so all in all over here we have seen the types of mixture their combustible limits the reason behind that and the different types of mixture requirements okay thank you very much